Hey, Burp, are you sure this spaceship doesn't have any weapons? No, we have no need of weapons. You must have something. I mean, what if someone attacks you while you're tootling around interstellar space? I would play them Flegropian folk music. It is very beautiful and leads to peaceful resolutions. Would you like to hear some? That would be lovely, Bleb. I think we would all benefit from something mellow after all our recent dramas. <laughs> Hey, turn it off! Go on, turn it off, it's bloody awful! Neil, don't be rude. I'm sure it's just an acquired taste. Perhaps it is too quiet for your human sound detectors. I will increase the volume by a factor of ten. No! no. Blip, why don't we save it for another time, eh? Hang on a minute. What about this big red button here, hmm? I bet that fires some kind of laser blaster. Neil, what's with the obsession with weapons? I just fancy turning the ship around and causing some serious damage to that secret facility. And what would be the point in doing that? Duh! Revenge! Look, Neil, they were just doing their job. I'm sure your captivity was nothing personal. Nothing personal? That anal probe sure felt personal, bird. Neil, you've got to put it behind you. Is that a sick joke? Eh? Uh, anal probe? Behind me? What? I think you might be being a bit oversensitive, Neil. Come on, focus on the here and now. I mean, look at that view of the Earth. It's stunning. Your planet, it is precious, is it not? Yes, it is precious. I fear that your leaders might destroy it. They didn't respond well to my message of peace. Despite my Phlegropian folk song? Yes, it is a shame that our species tends to screw things up all the time. Perhaps your people can learn another way. Hey, uh, what are you doing? Get off! Don't panic, Neil. He's only touching your arm. Uh, yes, but he's got weird fingers. They're all long and icky. Come back with me to my planet, Neil, and learn how to coexist without war and the destruction of nature. What? Yes, Neil. You should seize this opportunity. Not just for your sake, but for the sake of all mankind. Hang on, but what about Tasmin? Tasmin? What about her? Well, when I left her, she was gagging for it. What's the matter with you? Think of the bigger picture, Neil. You'll be the first human ever to travel to another planet. And with what you learn, you can then return and teach your people how to live in harmony with one another. There is Plagropian folk song all about such a possibility. Let me play it for you. No, no, stop that! Oh. Come on, Neil. I told you that your one act of bravery might lead on to greater things. Can't you see? This must be the unfolding of God's plan. Everything we've been through together, all the trials and tribulations, they've all been leading to this. Ah, all right then. I guess it could be quite an adventure. I mean, you never know. It might even impress Mum. Yes, and don't forget your son Thomas. I'm sure he'll be blown away by it. Gosh, yes, Thomas. I mean, it would be great if, you know, I did something that made him proud. Thinking about it, this would push my previous heroics well into the shade. Not so much a a local hero as an intergalactic hero. Exactly. Okay, Bob, let's do this. Let's get you home. Neil. Death. Is that really you? What do you want now? (laughs) Oh, well, well. What are the chances, eh? Now, listen, Death. There's no point lecturing me, all right? Despite experiencing some pretty heavy and harrowing moments since we last met, I'm determined to continue on with my mission, all right? In fact, I'm just off now to help save the planet and the whole of humanity. Well, strange as it may seem, Neil, not everything in this cosmos is about you. I mean, you might have thrown a large Neil-shaped spanner into the works. That's going to cause me no end of hassle. But life goes on. Well, until it doesn't, of course. (laughs) Right, now then. Blurp Spagglestrud. Would you mind just signing here, here, and just here, please? Oh, Blab, I'm so sorry. Is it my time? Aye, I'm afraid so. 
Hang on, but what about my space adventure? What, what about my opportunity to teach humanity about Bert's way of life? For fuck's sake, Neil. It's blurp, not Bert. Burp or Berk. Right, Bert. Calm down. Carundial. The name's Carundial. Not that you've ever bothered to remember that. Hmm. Good to see you both getting on so well. Anyway, best of luck flying this craft without a pilot. What? Three, two, one, and... <coughs> Dad! <coughs> Seagull! Do something! <coughs> We're spinning out of control! Oh, what do you want me to do? I don't know how to fly this thing. Well, just hit some buttons with your beak! <coughs> What are you doing? Not that button! For God's sake, just turn it off! I can't stand that noise! So, before we conclude this uh, special Eastwater edition of Dirty Green Fingers, I think we have time for one more quick question. Hi, Clive. Yes, dear. Rather attractive young lady in the short skirt. Uh, Tracy Delaney here from Blackstone's Bookshop. Hi, Tracy. Great to see you again. What's your question? Yeah, like, um, how often should I, like, you know, like, water my plants? Great question, Tracy. Thanks. What I do, Tracy, is stick my hand deep into the soil to see how moist it is. You know, there's nothing quite like the sensation of warm, moist soil between your fingertips. Moisture is everything. Wouldn't you agree, ladies? <laughs> uh, hold on. I, I think perhaps we ought to... What the hell was that? I don't know. Oh my god, but it's like totes destroyed the promenade gardens. Better check the cameras are all right. It would be a nightmare if we lost all that footage. I was so on form today. Yes, you were, Clive. And then there's your crew. Oh my god. You've got to make sure that they're okay too, I suppose. Uh, yes, uh, the crew. Uh, of course. <coughs> Is Clive all right? Yeah. I mean, God, he's totes shaken, though. I mean, that thing only just missed him. Well, what was it? I don't know. I mean, whatever it was, it's like totes deep buried in that crazed over there. Oh, my God, look, it's Neil. What? Where? There. He's just appeared from out of the hole. Oh, Neil. Hi, Tasman. Boy, it's great to see you again. Oh, and, and, and you, Tracy. Uh, sorry I haven't been at work this week. Where have you been, Neil? After that terrorist attack at Shez Kevin, you just vanished. I've been so worried sick about you. I really, really have. Sorry, Tasmin. It's, it's a long and very complicated story. Neil, were you flying that thing? Miranda. Uh, yes, I was. Well, you know, sort of. What are you doing here? In fact, what are you all doing here? What exactly did I interrupt? Interrupt? You've done far more than that, you reckless idiot. You've just crashed your whatever it is straight into Clive Marshall's TV show. Not only that, you've devastated Eastwater's award-winning garden and severely traumatised your son. Isn't that right, Thomas? Eh? Yeah, I did know. You see? He can barely talk, he's so upset by what he's witnessed. And where were you this Wednesday? You were meant to be taking him to the cinema. I mean, really, Neil, what sort of father are you? Look, Miranda, I've had a really bad week. I've been kidnapped, interrogated, tortured, shot, crapped on, and to top it all, I've just been thrown around inside an alien spacecraft before crashing into Earth. I tell you, now, Miranda, is not the time to have a go at me. What? Kidnapped? An alien spacecraft? Oh, God, I've heard some pathetic excuses from you in my time, but really, Neil... This is just an insult to my intelligence. Amanda's right, Neil. I mean, you, like, need to take control and take responsibility for your behaviour. I mean, like, why didn't you call and just let me know that you weren't going to be coming into work? 
Well, strangely enough, Tracy, the heavily armed goons that had taken me prisoner weren't that keen on me making phone calls. Anyway, I've had enough interrogations for one week. Come on, Tasman, let's go and get a drink. Sorry, Neil. Well, I'd rather not. Look, I really am sorry I couldn't contact you, but it genuinely wasn't within my power to actually... No, Neil, it, it's not just the lack of a phone call. I mean, I thought I knew you, Neil. I thought I knew the real Neil Taylor. But I was wrong. You're not a selfless hero. You're a selfish destroyer of beauty. Yeah, but... I loved those gardens, Neil. But now, like our blossoming love, but... they're ruined and completely beyond repair. <laughs> what is... Uh... All well. We've got enough footage to put together a pretty decent program. Oh, God, that's like such a relief, Clive. No thanks, of course, to that nutter who crashed into us. I mean, why couldn't he ditch in the sea? It's only just over there. Well, you better ask Neil that question. I mean, it was his spacecraft. It wasn't my bloody spacecraft. It belonged to Blurp from the planet Flagrop. Blurp? Flagrop? Yes, the stupid and fairly unbelievable names, I know. But if you don't believe me... Just ask the seagull. Oh, for fuck's sake, seagull. Say something. Oh, Neil. What on earth's happened to you? Yeah, Neil. I mean, seeking help from a dumb seagull, like it's just totes pathetic. Well, that's very good news. So, to all intents and purposes, Neil Taylor has now been, uh, neutralised. Yes, Director. Not a moment too soon. According to Special Ops, he and his feathered friend were on the cusp of hurtling halfway across the universe. The QLU for such an adventure would have been off the scale. QLU? Qualitative life usage. And of course, we really lucked out when the spacecraft crashed straight into Eastwater's prize garden display. Hmm. Yes, that was lucky. In an instant, Neil's newly minted reputation for heroism was obliterated and replaced with that of perpetrator of wanton municipal vandalism. And his budding love life? Annihilated, ma'am. The lady in question wants nothing more to do with him. Excellent. Now, how about Clive Marshall? Sorry? That sleazy TV presenter. He was due to be collected, but Neil saved him. Seeing as we've hit on such a lucky streak, I'd hope that he might too have been taken care of. Uh, sorry, ma'am. I've got no update for a Clive Marshall. Hmm, disappointing. I was hoping for a clean sweep. Yes, uh, dreadfully sorry, Director. I mean, we'll look into that straight away. Um... Unfortunately, David and I have just been terribly busy. I mean, not just with the Neil Taylor case, but, you know, with this whole God Mm, issue. Yes, God. I had hoped the old fool had slipped quietly into a coma by now. Far from it. Here's the latest intel from Special Ops. It, It makes worrying reading. What on earth is the silly bugger up to? Surely he realises he can't just start making things again? And who are all these silly little people helping him? Where the hell have they all come from? Santa's elves, Mum. Ever since the incident with Father Christmas and his subsequent incarceration, they've been kicking their heels somewhat. They're a highly skilled workforce, Mum. It's a shame that they hadn't been retasked elsewhere. The maintenance department, for example, would certainly have appreciated their finely tuned motor skills. Well, this is just getting out of hand. Right. As a matter of utmost priority, I need you to... (sighs) Sorry to burst in on you like this. Really? You don't exactly look sorry to death? No, you're right. I'm not. So what is it? This. Did you instruct the Fate Department to amend the schedule? Amend it? Well, how exactly? Here. Blurp Spagglestrud, resident of the planet Flagrop. Now look at the expiration date. I'm looking, but I'm sorry, Death, that date means nothing to me. I'm sure it doesn't, but to me that date is everything. It's what I do. I collect according to the dates in this book, and I can tell you that right now, Director, that date has been altered. You're sure about that, are you? A hundred percent. And the only way that that could have happened is if fate had intervened. And the only person with the authority to sanction such a thing... Is you. Ma'am. So, 
Let's say for the sake of argument that the fate department had got involved. So what? One little flagropian loses a few years. It's hardly going to throw the universe into a tailspin now, is it? But how do you know that? How do any of us know how one life or even one small event impacts everything else? Which is why we have this preordained schedule in the first place. To act as an anchor in this otherwise swirling sea of cosmic chaos. Are you done, Death? Can I continue with my meeting now? You can't play at being God, Director. It's not your job. Oh, so whose job is it then? God's? Well, uh, I suppose that would make more sense. Joan. Sorry, I, I was just saying. Yeah. With all due respect, and I mean that most insincerely, at least God is creating something. When was the last time you did something truly creative round here? Since orchestrating that boardroom coup of yours, your so-called rationalisation programme has squeezed the life out of this place. I mean, look at these two joyless wonders. Charming. They're hardly Adam and Eve merrily chuckling their way through Eden, are they? That's not fair. I mean, we have fun sometimes, don't we, David? We do? Yes, I mean, like the time the other day when you thought that you'd lost your favourite pencil. That wasn't exactly fun, June. It was actually a bit of a worry. No, but, I mean, you eventually found it in your top pocket. I mean, it did make us laugh. A bit. Don't you remember? Uh, Not really, June. I do recall the immense relief of being reunited with the pencil, though. You see, Director? (laughs) I mean, you've not exactly surrounded yourself with dynamic beacons of vitality, have you? Well, thank you for popping in today and sharing your thoughts, Death. All your feedback has been duly noted. However, if you'd excuse us, we do have a meeting to conclude. Sure, I'll gladly leave you to it. Right, you two. I don't care how you do it, but you need to find a way of shutting God down. And this time, I want him out of the building. Are we talking banishment, Director? Yes, we are. Banishment. Let's see how he likes it, shall we? Come on, Neil. It's time you got home. Don't want to. Well, you can't stay here for all eternity, staring out to sea and getting pissed. Can if I want. In fact, being a sodding immortal, that's exactly what I can do. Look, I know you're feeling a bit low at the moment, but try and focus on the positives. <laughs> the positives? Yes, Uh not everyone in Eastwater hates you. In fact, there are bound to be some people who really loathe those gardens. What? What are you talking about? Everyone likes fucking flowers. The Promenade Gardens won awards, for Christ's sake. All right, well, uh, at least you'll now save yourself a few quid. What do you mean? Tasman. Ooh, very high maintenance. Strikes me as the sort of girl who'd expect expensive jewellery and exotic holidays. And being an asexual angelic being trapped in the body of a seabird, you're qualified to know this... uh, how, exactly? God, you're hard work sometimes. Look, Neil, you've just got to roll with the punches, all right. Roll with the punches? (laughs) I was about to become Earth's emissary to to an alien civilization before returning in triumph to sweep Tasman off her feet and save all mankind. Compared to my previous trajectory as a as a fading bookseller in a poxy bookstore in a crap-ass town, that is one bastard of a disappointment, don't you think? Well, you still got your mother, Neil. No, I haven't. She thinks I'm some sort of alien-human abomination and I was quite happy to just see me dissected. It was just a misunderstanding, Neil. I'm sure if you just spoke to her, you could get things ironed out. Really? You don't think it's too late? It's never too late, Neil. Come on, let's get you home. Mum, we really need to talk. Leave me alone, you foul little alien. Go on, get out of my house. I don't think this is going to work, Bird. Especially if she's obviously, you know, busy. Come on, Neil. Show some metal. Mum, I know you're uh, entertaining, but we need to sort this out once and for all. Hello, Neil. Clive? I don't wish to be rude, but now's not a good time. 
Jean's had a tough couple of days and is in desperate need of some dirty green-fingered action. I'm sorry, Clive, but family takes precedence over uh, whatever it is you are. Did you dare to say family, Mr Taylor? No filthy alien could ever be part of this family, I can tell you that right now. L- listen, Mum, you need to know the truth about me. Oh, at last. Confession time, is it? Well, better late than never. The reason why I was able to jump 300 foot off that cliff, or walk through fire, or survive sustained erectile probing by a metallic rod with a thousand volts running through it... Really? Yes, Ouch. Isn't because I am some mutant alien man hybrid, Mum, but because I am actually immortal. <laughs> what? Like Zeus? No, Clive, not like Zeus. Hey, Jean, perhaps you ought to change the name of this place from Sea View to Mount Olympus. No, listen, I just can't die. There was some screw up with what they call the longevity department. Who's they? Cosmos something or other. Longevity department? Brilliant. Is that one floor down from home furnishings and electrical? Clive, could you just fuck right off? Whoa there, Neil. No need for the profanity. Actually, Mr Taylor, I think it's you that should fuck right off. I mean, how much of a fool do you take me for, eh? Do you really think that I'm for one moment that I would fall for all this? Sorry to cut in like this, but I'm afraid I've got a bit of cleaning up to do. Are you stalking me, or what? You, you, you! Yes. Hello again, Mrs Taylor. You were the one who snatched me from my home and dragged me up to that cliff top. I hardly dragged you, Jean. As I recall, I gave you a lift in a rather nice cab. Jean, I thought you were snatched by soldiers. The second time I was, yes. But this was before. My, you are one popular babe. Hang on, Death, you called Mum Jean. Oh, God! Is, is is that why you're here? Is it that time? Oh, not this again. I told you, Neil. This old battle axe will outlive the cockroaches following a nuclear winter. No, it's this little fella here I'm interested in. Why? Are you a fan? Not as such, though you are certainly very much the focus of my attention right now. Clive, you be careful. She's got a big sword. Has she now? I like a chick who knows how to defend herself. No sort today, Jean. I just come armed with a pen. Now, Mr Marshall, if you could just sign here, here and here. OK, so gorgeous. What's your name? Gorgeous? My, what a silver-tongued fella you are. I have to say, it's a fairly unique experience having a client come on to me. It's a... Rather pleasing, actually. What do you mean, client? Oh, yes. Uh, Sorry. I lost my thread there a bit. (laughs) Oh, is it hot in here? Is it just me? Clive has that effect. It's really annoying. Anyway, I'm death. Oh, death. Bit dark and yet also sexy in a broodingly gothic kind of way. Okay. Dear death, I hope your soil yields an abundance of... Death? Oh, my God. Oh, it all makes sense now. That's why you gave Neil the sword that day on the cliff. You were just doing your job. Aye. When it comes to the end, I'm certainly your go-to girl. Now, Clive, thanks to Neil here, you've actually got a bit more time than you were due. But unlike Neil, Amanda has somehow managed to squeeze you back into the schedule. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't take him, lady death. Just death, thank you. Although, uh, Lady Death does have a nice ring to it. Oh, I'm begging you, please, Death, please don't take my Clive. I couldn't live without him. I bet you could, though, Jean. In my experience, humans are very fickle when it comes to companions. Actually, Death, Mum is genuinely very fond of Clive. God knows why, but, but it's true. Is there any way you can reschedule, you know, just one more time? Sorry, Neil. There's just been way too much mucking around with the diary recently. There you go, gorgeous. All signed. I've also added my mobile number. Although, if our esteemed director can just take it upon herself to intervene and alter the timelines, then why shouldn't I? Oh, fuck it. And fuck her. Hang on, you've just torn up Clive's death certificate. Does that mean... I Neil. It means war.
episode of Eternal Strife was recorded during lockdown in the UK. Eternal Strife was written, directed and recorded by Bruce Windward and featured the voices of Angela McIntosh, Mark Crozer and Bruce Windward. Thank you.